Killer Vault Bikes, welcome to the YouTube channel. We're back. Today what we're gonna do is, we've had this City Coco scooter come in from sunny Alpington in Kent. What we, what we need to do is basically just decipher why it doesn't turn on. Um, I can be a bit of an e-bike mind reader sometimes and I have a suspicion there may be a battery issue in here. These scooters are issued as standard with a 60 volt 12 AH battery. I think the best place to go with this is a 72 volt 20 or 25 AH battery paired with a Sabatron uh, 45A controller. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's have a little look inside the scooter, tear the stock battery apart, build a new pack, put the new controller in, display all of that good stuff and get it running. Let's go. So trying to turn the ignition, there's no, there's no visible signs of power or anything. So we're going to have to investigate into this floorboard or underneath this floorboard which is where the battery and controller lies so here we've got a 52 volt 30 amp controller pretty basic Probably part that out with a 60 volt 12 AH pack, as promised. A lot of these electric vehicles have this um, five way junction box. The three colours in the centre are the blue, green, and the yellow, are the phase wires. And then for some strange reason, the blue here is the battery negative, and the red is the battery positive. So, what we're going to do is carefully disconnect the battery positive and negative just bearing in mind not to let these touch otherwise it's going to arc weld in your face so we'll do that now so what i think would be nice is if we disassemble this factory pack and we uh, see what we can see inside in terms of construction and then also what um, kind of condition and quality the cells are. So let's just do that now. The first thing that immediately jumps out to me that I find fascinating, besides the corrosion on the cell group, is that you can clearly see the grind marks here. So whatever cells have come out in this pack with the City Coco out the factory, they've recycled or reclaimed the cells for it, as well as using steel coated nickel, or should we say nickel plated steel. And that's as well as only having, let's zoom out a little bit, two series connections that are 6mm, that's besides having 6mm quality of cells, we're probably scoring this a 0 out of 10. For quality of nickel, another 0 out of 10. And then quality of construction, again, 0 out of 10. So in this next step, what we've done is we've disconnected these, this sense plug, this plug of sense wires from the BMS. And we've connected it directly to our kilovolt balance tester. This basically enables us to see what each and every wire is sending back to the BMS. We've got the total voltage. So this is the voltage of all the groups. Maximum voltage is the highest voltage group. What that is reading, which happens to be group one. This is the minimum voltage, which is the minimum voltage group, 3.666, quite ominous that. Um, voltage drop is actually the difference between the highest and lowest group. So our um, difference in voltage between group 1, which is the highest, and group 
16 which is the lowest is 0.224 now this is the number of strings that it detects this would usually give you an idea with a functioning battery of um, if it's a 16s 12s so on and so forth but if we go over to the right hand side now this is a graph displaying each and every group we've got group 1 at 3.890 group 2 at 3.713 a short so when you've got a dead short across a cell group which cells often do when they fail um, that's basically why we're not seeing 16 groups here because group 3 8 10 and 12 are dead short and failing so essentially in terms of cell health or cell durability right now these these cells are well past the sell by date it's worth bearing in mind also this test is currently available on our website you can purchase it directly from us um, yeah good stuff if you do a lot of battery maintenance or if you take a lot of packs apart and you're interested in testing every cell group in one go nice and easily this is the tool for you the kilovolt balance tester so there you go that's a little tool plug done um, so happy days we know what's kind of going on with this pack we know where we're at um, shocking assembly shocking spot welding shocking cells generally shocking pack um, let's build something now to replace this this is the configuration of cells that we've settled for a 21700 pack 20s 6p molly self p42a cells so that's going to result in a 72 volt 25.6 amp hour pack so uh let's begin building the pack the thing what we need to do now next job to do now is to start populating these um, spaces that we've put together with the cells so let's do that it'd be nice to just do a quick comparison in size and construction between the old pack which is this one here with the green if you saw our last video kilovolt tech talks you would have seen this absolutely humongous 20 sbms outrageously large for no reason um absolutely not suitable for this build but I mistakenly ordered this on eBay doing the old um, scale by eye trick which obviously didn't work for, for me in my favour this time. Um, in the picture it looked absolutely tiny and I thought ideal, uh, didn't, didn't work out like that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to end today's video here, um, not at a loss, we're still going to win this one but we just need a little bit of extra time to wait for the Sabatron controller to come in and wait for this slimmer BMS. So. As soon as we've got a more streamlined BMS that's going to help us fit this battery into the chassis that we've got, then we're going to crack back on with this video, fit the controller and get it rolling. So to binkillervoltbikes.com, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Let's go.